uh, we're going to carry on having a look at our collision project because we're doing our monthly game dev challenge looking at collisions and traces last uh, week we looked at collisions mostly uh, and then today we're going to be trying to have a look at traces uh, trying to build up a bit of confidence in the basics and then we've got quite a bit of time this month you know we've got another three sessions this month which is great so um, yeah there's no rush at all uh, and for me I don't feel very confident with any of this stuff to be honest so I'm happy to uh, go through it quite slowly so we've been looking at <clears throat> traces there's a few pages on this you're working on your own card game today Ooh, fancy how's that going for you uh so we're going to start just through reading it all uh, we did a bit of this last time as well so we have traces the traces overview and then there's some guides into how to do it as well which we'll probably have a look at uh so let's start with the main overview one here we go so there may be instances in your game where you want to determine if the player character is looking at something and if so alter the game state in a way for example highlight something when a player looks at it or maybe you want to determine if the enemy can see the player character and if so start shooting or engage them some uh, engaging them in some way you can accomplish both scenarios by using traces or ray casts uh, to shoot out an invisible ray which will detect geometry between two points and if geometry is hit return what was hit so that you may do uh you may then do something with it when it says geometry here is that just does every static mesh have a simple collision or can you have a, a static mesh with no collision i'm not too sure if they're forced to have some form of collision just getting a basic game that works at this point cool uh, what sort of card game are you going to be doing Holtzy? there are different op options available when running a trace you can run a trace to check for collision with any objects where hit objects are returned or you can run a trace by trace channel uh, where any objects hit will return hit information if the object is sit, set to specifically respond to a specified trace channel which can also uh, which can be set by the collision settings which is what we looked at last week okay good um, so in addition to running traces by objects or by trace channel, you can run your trace to detect single hits or multiple hits. Where a single trace hits returns a singular hit result and a multi-trace returns multiple hits resulting from the trace. With traces, you can also specify the type of ray that is used, a straight line, a box, a capsule or a sphere. Okay, sweet. Hey, Danny X, how are you doing? Welcome back. Uh, like, so I've done stuff like this in Unity before. It's just it's not nothing. I haven't done any trace work in in my job work work. So I feel a bit bad, and and it's something I want to get a bit more confident with the basics. Even though they probably have a slightly different implementation in my workplace, it's still if if I understand how it's done in Unreal, that's a good foundation to get started with, right? Hey there, Fyro. Nice to see you as well. Welcome back. Yeah, the whole the, the the different channels and uh collision channels and trace channels in Unreal always felt a little weird and you have those the on each ob each object or maybe each object type as those the different lists of what it how it responds to everything else. But um Hello there, baby swag. Good to see you as well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, since you choose a range instead of an ending vector. Ah, is that true? Yeah, what is in you do a start to end instead of just saying hmm would it be the same so you need to know the point in which to start it right we'll find out now i trust you you know what you're on about i just i'm not uh, getting it pro properly yeah, you need to give it a start and an end right okay let, let's have a look at the overview then it's not too lengthy should be fine okay so traces offer a method uh, for reaching out in your levels and getting feedback on what is present along a line segment good that's a better explanation i like that you use them by providing two endpoints a start and an end location and the physics system traces a line segment between those points reporting any actors with collision ah there you go that answers my other question that i had from the last introduction that it hits Traces are essentially the same as a ray cast or ray traces in other software packages. So we call them tracing in Unreal. Okay. 
Uh, okay, uh, Danny X, we'll, we'll have a look. We'll probably be having a little look at that today. Whether you know, uh, sorry, whether you want to know if one actor can see another or figure out the normal of a specific polygon or simulate high velocity weaponry, or if you need to know what an actor has, or oh, when an actor, no, sorry, if you need to know that an actor has entered A space, Traces offer you a reliable and computationally cheap solution. This document covers the basic feature set of traces in UE4. All right, let's have a look through then. Since traces use the physics system, you'll be able to define the category of the, of the thing you want to trace against. There are two broad categories to choose from, channels and object, type, object types. Channels are used for things like visibility and the camera, and almost exclusively have to do with tracing. Object types are the physics types of actors with collision in your scene, such as pawns, vehicles, destructible actors, etc. You can add more channels and object types as you need them. I think there's a cap then, but still. Uh, see, add a custom object type for your project. We did that last stream. I figured it out myself anyway. Okay, so returning a single or multiple hit. When tracing, you can choose to return the first thing that matches the criteria hit by the trace, or you can return everything hit by the trace that matches that criteria. Yes, that sounds reasonable. Special consideration is given to multi-trace by channel versus multi-trace by object. When using multi-trace by channel, the trace will return all overlaps up to and including the first block. Imagine shooting a bullet through some tall grass that then impacts a wall. Multi-trace by object, will return everything that matches an object type that the trace is looking for, assuming the component is set to trace return, return trace queries, making it great for counting the number of objects between the start and the end of the trace. Now, those two sentences didn't really explain the difference between the, the both of them. I think I need to read over those one more time just to try and get a gist of that. So it's by, uh, consideration multi-trace by channel or multi-trace by object. So channel return all overlaps up to and including the first block object will return everything that matches an object type that trace is looking for assuming the component is set to return trace queries which component is that on about there I guess it means on the object is the yeah I don't like what what component. Okay, great for counting the number of objects between start and end of the trace. So like one of them is a, a fil filtering by specific actors, and one is by a channel. So you could have a channel that is used by multiple actors, and you only care about one. Like pawns, for example, uh, the player and the enemy are both pawns. You might only care about. How many players has it gone through if you're shooting a gun and friendly fires off, for example? Um, so that kind of makes sense. It's just they made out as if it works differently, where it, it just seems to... Yeah, okay. You're just giving it a different thing to match against it. It feels more like... Okay, so I'm wondering, do I need to jot any of this down so far as well? Because yeah, we haven't. Vision project set ends. Okay, let's start down here. Just anything we think is is relevant from this week. So traces, uh, also known as ray tracing or ray tra uh, uh, casting, I guess. Uh, we uh, essentially we want to reach out in the world to discover information about our environment so we can uh, we can do single are they called single Single line trace, yeah. 
So single returns uh, the first one it hits, right? So single X trace returns the first object with collision uh, that it um, hits. And then multi uh, multi trace. Is it what is it called multi line? I can't remember. Multi. I think it's just multi though, not it's not multi line. All objects including the one. That blocks it, I guess. Oh, hang on. It's descriptions. It does. Does it stop when it gets to a certain point? It talks about like blades of grass or something at some point. I don't know what the the s and the slashes mean out for us, but hello, good to see you, good dude. Is it a spelling? You mean? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You define an end and a start point. Let's note that down as well. And end point to the trace. It overlaps between the start and end point. Yeah, like that. I see. Well, you're not talking Dan language right now. Are you good, sir? It's okay, then. Thing is fine. Okay, uh, let's continue where we were then. Uh, and actually, oh, one last thing. You can trace by channel, set up in collision profile, or by object type. Cool, that's fine as well. Let's also whack these in a bullet point list. Unordered, please. Thank you. As you say, you're going out for us. What have you been up to? Uh, right. Uh, sorry, back to where we were then. So. This is showing us the difference where all the hits are, I guess. So this is uh, the f this is the line it goes down. These are the ones that it'll hit. Uh, this hits and then it stops. Whereas this one is just going through all of them. So this will be a single, this will be a multi. Okay, so hit results. Uh, when, a hit, when a trace hits something, it returns a hit result struct. Made available in blueprints and also CPP. This is what the struct looks like. So we have a blocking hit boolean. Whether or not the hit was blocking it uh, was a blocking hit. This is used when multi tracing by channel due to the ability to have traces simply overlap and not stop the trace. Hmm. I need to think. I think there's one bit of detail I'm missing here. The multi ones can go through and then hit and stop by the sounds of it. But I don't quite get in which which situation that would be. We got like for me, I thought this would be a single line trace. 
I need to take out the trash and eat. Dinner? Maybe. Breakfast, dinner. Okay, I see. Before I question it. Sorry, Outfrost. I am not on it. Uh, I don't feel like moving. I have the same exact problems and I accept my fa accepted my fate. <laughs> yeah, I, it took me a long time to, to do what I needed to do today as well. A multi trace can go through multiple objects. Single trace stops at the first. Yeah, so it kind of says that, right? That's what I, I thought. But can a multi... Would a multi sometimes go all the way through and then stop at a point as well? At the end of the range, I agree with you, but this is the this is what made me think. So we get a blocking hit. This is used when multi-tracing by channel due to the ability to have traces simply overlap. And ah, hold on. It's down to this. I think you can say whether or not something um uh let me try and think this go to our collision here is this the tracing as well block or overlap would it be due to this no that's the object type though right hmm Uh, let's go to the custom trace channel stuff. You need it to block so that the line hits trace, not like uh, so you need it to block so that it... uh, I'm still not a hundred percent on it. Sorry if I'm a bit slow on the uptake here. Well, I think it still it still overlaps it, doesn't it? If you don't hit it, you'd still get the result, and it just won't be a blocking hit. Freshly picked pecans, and I think we all know how that's going to go. Oh, I mean, the freshly picked pecans sounds lovely, and it's quite a lovely thing to say as well. Hey, Broom Bob. Nice to see you. Yeah, uh, we'll try and have a look and figure out how that is working a sec. So I think there's a... Go to Project Settings... Collision. So we can set up our own traces here. And you can choose whether it ignores over. So it's the same settings here. So I guess if you do it by channel. Uh, where do these traces come up though? Do they come up in. So you, can you tell something how you want it to respond to different traces? So, Dan Trace. Ah, there, there, there. Trace responses. I missed it. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong things. Trace responses. Great. So, basically, we say what it's going to do here. So, does the single line, it'll stop even if it's not blocking? Okay, yeah, let me write down my question so I, I, know, I know what I'm unsure of here. So, basically, single line trace and multi line trace so stops at the first uh let's just say with object by object um and then we or by channel even because the example talks about channel here stops at the first uh object that has its uh collision settings set to uh, overlap all it the trace type the trace channel specified I'm not sure about that that's yeah I'm single line trace I'm sure it stops only when it's a block overlap doesn't work 
let's see the description on here again. Uh, you're able to define the category of thing you want to trace against. There are two broad categories. You can do channels, objects, types. Channels are used for things like visibility, like camera, and almost exclusively have to do with tracing. Object types are the physics type actors, uh, actors with collision in your scene, such as pawns, vehicles, and destructible actors. You can add more channels. Uh, when tracing, you, to, you can choose to return the first thing that matches the criteria hit by the trace. Or you can return everything. I think it cancels a hit even if it's not a blocking hit, right? Turn. Yeah, you can definitely. You can return everything hit by a trace that matches a criteria. But special consideration is given to multi trace by channel for this multi trace by object. When using channel, the trace will return all overlaps up to and including the first block. Yes. Okay. So the grass would be set to overlap if you cared about the overlaps and then you wanted to do some like movement on it if it overlaps with it, which is very costly. You wouldn't do that, but still. And then a wall would be set to block it. So that we get the multi-trace by channel. So, we, But we're saying the single line does not do that. Uh, make sure to return everything that matches an object type the trace is looking for, assuming the component set is a return quotes, uh, trace queries. Making it a great, uh, making it, like, what's happened to my reading? Uh, I hate to, I'm not bad at reading. I found recently in streams, I, I'm struggling to read. Making it great for counting the number of objects between the start and the end of the trace. E. Uh, by object, I guess it doesn't block. There's no blocking. I, I think that's what I'm taking from this. So multi-trace by object. Uh, so a multi-line trace again. So this will be by channel. This will be by object. Returns all actors of type. That match the criteria. between the start and the end point. Matching criteria is too vague. Um, yeah, but over, saying overlap with the trace makes it think that it's overlap. That are along the line between the start and the end point. Uh, we can't, don't set, blocking or overlap here. That's what I'm gathering from this. Whereas by channel is, returns all actors uh, it overlapped with up until the end, uh, the first block uh, thing that blocks it. Up to, up until the first thing of block, uh, up until and including. The first thing that blocks it, or otherwise until the end of the trace. That's what it looks like. I know it seems silly to go through these, but clearly if I just brushed past it, then I, I feel I wouldn't have really understood it. So um, I think it's worthwhile doing, even though it's a little bit of a, a time sink, but. Okay, so single line trace by channel and single line trace by object. We can test some of these out and see how they work, right? We can set up a light, a bunch of objects and, try and test it out. Uh, single line trace by object. Um,
So I'd imagine this would return the first actor has the object type. The trace encounters between start and end point. So this is return all actors of uh, object of the object type. Yeah. So now it's this single line trace. Yeah, we. D I don't know the difference between the single line trace. I guess it, it, I think it's probably this stops at the first one, but is it block or overlap? If so, I don't understand the difference between multi <laughs> and single. It seems too similar. Return the first. I think it's going to be the first one that it hits without caring about the things on the way. Hey, Mr. Balrog. Imagine if Americans switched from pounds to kilograms overnight. There would be a mass confusion. Oh, you're making... You're making funnies, Balrog. In only the way that you know how to do. Using custom channel and you're doing in CPP, there is a weird way to call your custom channel. It's uh, a name and convention, ECC and game channel chase, and then the number. Yeah, I, I remember it being a number thing. It's a bit odd, isn't it? So you don't actually write the name of it, it's just what entry it is in that array of a channel type or enum or whatever they use to represent them, I guess, right? Thank you for that, uh, Denyx. I appreciate the help. Uh, so single line trace, return the first actor or object. Yeah. Actor, or oh, it's not even always actor, is it? It'd just be like a geometry, it says, right? What's you going to say after? <laughs> uh, that is set to block, or is it try, uh, or would overlap count? The first act of the collision that is set to block or would overlap. Uh, um, the channel type. Okay, we, we, we'll check those things out when we actually get there and do it then. I will need to make myself a new drink in a moment. So let me see how much uh, we'll maybe finish reading through this and then this page and then we'll get on getting me a drink. So whether it's a blocking hit or not, this is used when multi-tracing by channel due to the ability to have traces simply overlap and not stop the trace. So that's making it as if you can't have them overlap. In that, that's the thing. Initial overlap, whether this is the first overlap of a series of results, that's useful, okay. This is the time of impact along the trace directional, uh, in, along the trace direction ranging from zero to one. If there is no hit, this will return one. So it's not actually the time, it's not how long it took, but it's more of, a scale from zero to from start to the end point. Normalized is that the right term between zero and one? I'm not sure about overlap, but I've heard block is the thing. Also, the number is based on only. Hang on, uh, the number is based on only of the custom ones. Yeah, so the number is for the 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 extra ones that you've set up in the traces. You mean by that? I think. Uh, okay, location, the world space location of the hit that is modified based on the shape of the trace. World space location of the hit. Hmm. How is it modified by the... I guess it's like if you hit it with a, with a sphere, then you need to work out which part of it hit it. Maybe? I don't know. Impact point, the absolute location of the hit does not include the shape of the trace, only the point of the hit. Right. Okay, so I guess 
the location would be if you're moving a cube through space it would be where would the origin of that cube be when it hit whereas the impact point is actually where it hit i'm gonna guess that's what we're kind of going with here so um i'm trying to think if we were we were moving like a cube through the air and it was traveling this direction and then there's a wall here uh so when that hits this would be the impact point but i believe probably like the origin of this shape would be oh give me just one second bear mic Okay, sorry about that. I had a phone call. Hello, hello. We're back. Hey, hey, and uh, Danny, it's not a problem, dude. I appreciate, I appreciate you getting involved in conversation. It's always easier to kind of break down understanding of stuff. That's why sometimes I struggle reading books to like learn new topics because if you haven't interpreted the language they used correctly, there's no one for you to go. Oh, do you think they mean this? Uh, so yeah, no, it's it's very helpful. So thank you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that, that's how I would perceive this one would be the uh, location. I, I might be wrong with this. And then uh, this one would be the, oops, uh, the impact point. I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, normal the direction of the trace so the normal the direction of the trace hmm so that would be this right so if we're coming in and hitting it on this angle right so it would give us in this example it would give us like zero one saying it's going that way actually what would it be one zero my bad like going to the right, I think. I'm just guessing. Actually, no, the direction would be going this way, right? So it'd be minus one if we were doing it that way. Yeah, I, I'm going to guess it's that. We can maybe have a look at some examples in a short moment. But, um, yeah, uh, impact normal, the normal of the hit surface. Okay. So yeah, that, that makes sense. So yeah, that, that just gives you the direction that it was shot from. So yeah, this would be the impact, uh, the normal. What is it, what is it called normal? Yeah, so this one's called the normal. And then the surface. So let's make this orange wall a, a different shape, I guess. Let's just make it like that shape. <laughs> For some reason, it's an orange lightning bolt all of a sudden. Okay, so then the, I guess the, the impact normal would be that uh, kind of this angle, I guess, right? 
that would be the impact normal. I'm guessing. I'm glad you live for these fancy graphics. Me too. I do enjoy a little dabble in paint. Um, okay, uh, the physical material. Use that. Holy cow, it's the wonderful Safiraco again. Safiraco, thanks for the raid. Welcome, Safiraco community. Today, we are looking at traces in Unreal Engine and trying to learn about them uh, and build up a bit of base knowledge and confidence in it. Hey again, 30 uh, Gaming, nice to see you. Safiraco, good day, good day. Thank you, Merlin, for welcoming them. And good evening, Merlin, as well. I missed your message. Hello. Holtzy, thank you too. I think those pig horses are definitely worth dropping. Look at them. Glorious. Glorious, glorious. Okay, so the, the physics material of the surface, the actual actor itself, the specific component on that. So, yeah, the, the, the actor has to... You, it's likely to be the root component if that's the... Yeah, would it be the collision or would it be the... the I guess that's one question I have outstanding from this. So, like, can you just have a static mesh without a collision? I guess you can. It just wouldn't have any collision profile, so it wouldn't actually hit it. I'm guessing you could then. I just, I know you can auto-generate them and stuff as well. Okay, uh, and then bone, if you're using a skeleton mesh. Hit item. Primitive. Which item in the primitive was hit? Okay, this sort of stuff is less meaningful for me. Try mesh on landscape. This is the index of the face that was hit. Okay, so that could be useful if you're doing something with... Okay, if you're using uh, tracing for different purposes. And if you, if you actually know what to do with the indexes of a try mesh. Uh, the start location and the end location of the trace. Okay, great. It's interesting because you think that you'd need to give that to the trace in order to do it. So the fact that it returns it is interesting. Uh, I'm doing okay. Thank you, Safaraka, for asking. Okay, so using shape traces then. Let's have a look. When a line trace is not enough, you may get the result you're after by using a shape trace instead. For example, maybe you're creating a vision cone for an enemy and you want to detect players that enter it. A line trace may not be enough as players may be able to avoid detection by ducking under the line trace. In this situation, you could possibly use a box trace, a capture trace or a sphere trace. So this is a box trace. It's just on a bit of an angle. It looks a bit weird. Actually, it looks really weird to me. This bit does. It's because it's because this one looks smaller. This top one, it looks like a keyboard key rather than a, a proper square. So you could place a stump or alter the landscape. Uh, yeah, perhaps, dude. Or it might be maybe some logic in um, spawning stuff. You might run something that will trace from the sky down and try and hit the landscape. And when, when it hits one, you record what index it is. So then you know, oh, I've got an item spawned in this area. So I can't have them within one in one neighbor. I, I don't know how you'd really um, work with that data from the what index on, the, on a landscape mesh it'd be. But um, yeah, it could be specific enough for the uh, whether or not you can just add a like a decal to a index on a landscape mesh. Perhaps that would work as well, Fiverr. <clears throat> uh, okay, you could try any of these, and they're all pretty much the same. From here, you just. We have object types rather than trace channel here. That's odd. Oh, it's because it's, no, it's not by channel. It's not odd. They just haven't shown the other ones, I guess. Shape trace functions like line traces where you are sweeping and checking for collision from a start point to an end point. 
However, shape traces, hang on, what? Shape traces function like line traces, where you are sweeping and checking for a collision from a start point to an end point. However, shape traces have an additional layer of checking because you are using a shape as a volume of sorts in your raycast. You can use a shape trace as a single line trace or as a multi trace. Not a single line trace, sorry, a single trace or a multi trace. And each are set up in the same manner as the line trace. However, you will need to provide additional details pertaining to the size or orientation of the shape that you use. So that is kind of in line with this idea if we're throwing a cube along through space. Then we've given it this 45 degree rotation. Uh, okay. Get UV coordinates from a trace. A trace can return the UV coordinates of the actor it hit, assuming trace complexity is uh, sorry, assuming trace complex is used. As of 4.14, this only works on static mesh components, procedural mesh components, and BSPs. It will not work on skeletal mesh components because you trace against the physics asset, which doesn't have UV coordinates, even if you choose to trace complex. But using this feature increases CPU memory usage. Because you have to keep a copy of those expositions and UV coordinates in main memory. Okay. Um, so enabling UV coordinates from trace, oh, this probably isn't something we'll be looking at during this month. Um, so you go into your project settings, you enable support UV from hit results, the physics section, Danny West. I am a fan. Hello, Poker, po Poker Badly, I was going to call you. I play Poker Badly. Hello. How has your Sunday been? Good to see you back again. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We don't care so much about other features. Tracing also has a number of minor features to limit what they return, making them easier to debug. <sighs> Excuse the yawn. Uh, they have the ability to trace against complex collision if a static mesh or procedural mesh has it enabled. If they're called from an, uh, from an actor, they can be told to ignore all attached components by enabling the actor to trace through itself. Right. Finally, they have the option to show a representation of the trace as red and green lines with large boxes represents hits. Okay. Yeah, so we'll probably want to go ahead and see that. Uh, now I did warn you, I don't like what's happening here when we scroll, look at that. Don't know what's happening there. Busy day today, lockdown spoils all of my forecasts, so I've been getting a head start on next week. Just downed tools. Uh, I'm never consult. I'm never consulted on these things by the government. I. It's a little bit rude, isn't it? You have to start waving your fist at the sky soon, poker badly. What What were your forecasts? Okay, so the what we're gonna do. I'm gonna chuck the kettle on, as I did warn you. So I'll take a short few minutes break, right? And when we get back, we'll have a look at these examples, and then we'll finish off today's session by. Uh, going into our project and we'll try and set up a bunch of boxes or items in a row and we'll change their trace types and we'll work out exactly how this works. They might issue more restrictions next week for us. Only allowed to go to the apothecary and grocery stores and small kids are allowed to go to daycare. Corona is on the rise in Sweden. Yeah, Sweden kind of took a relaxed approach after a while, didn't they? But it was to be the business uh, volumes would continue to grow, so that's not likely. What do you mean by volumes in that sense, dude? The amount of volume, uh, like the amount of businesses that open or... I see Balrog, yeah. Uh, to be honest, everyone, uh, I think, unless it really uh, affects people, ev I don't think people take it seriously, and it's a bit of a shame because I think a lot of people are going to die. 
And there we go. Hey, Brainoid. Lovely to see you. Just the amount of business we would do. Ah, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, fair enough, uh, Poker Badly. There we go. Uh, you don't need to say any more. Uh, right, yeah, so I'll go and get that kettle on and when we get back, uh, we'll do some examples, but first we'll have a look through their examples and maybe that'll help answer a couple of the questions that we had left. Uh, Brainoid might also know some of the answers about them because he's played around with these traces before. So we'll start with the single line traces. And we'll go through these. Yeah, we'll, we'll read through them. Maybe we can skim a little bit. I hate traces in Unreal. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, um, we'll see how I feel about them afterwards, eh? But right, yeah, uh, just going to take that quick break, okay? I'll be back shortly. Just putting a kettle on, making a hot drink, and then we'll be carrying on. <laughs>
Okay, we are back. Indeed. Indeed. It will be done soon, I hope. Very note. I want to see my four-headed beauty in all its glory. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at some examples. So we're first going to look at uh, a single align trace. I think by, uh, let's not do by, let's do the object one first. So perform a collision trace uh, along a given line and return the first object the trace hits that matches one of the specified object types. Oh, you can give it an array of them. Great. Um, hits, yeah, hits would just be, it intersects with, I guess, in this context. Yeah, it doesn't say blocking hit. So yeah, the first one that it comes across. Great. So if the, uh, follow the steps used uh, for the line trace. Uh, trace uh, Line trace by channel to set up a trace. Oh, we've done that one first then. Stuff you. Okay, so uh, collision trace along a given line and return the first object that the trace hits below, but it doesn't say the first object what that has been set to overlap or set to block doesn't really say that. Create a new project using the blueprint first person template. In the first person folder, open the first person character, right click on the graph and search for an event tick. Uh, is there not one available now? Um, Merlin. Uh, this will cause the trace to run every frame. Drag off the execute pin and then st search for trace uh, line trace by channel node. Mm hmm. So I guess, hang on, let's tag this off a sec. So, um, Blueprint function is called line trace by channel. Okay. Uh, while well, holding down the control key, we drag our camera out. This is where we'll start our trace from. Drag off the first person camera node and do a get world location and then connect it to the start of the trace. Um, drag off the first person camera node again and get a world, get world rotation node. And we pass that into the, get the forward vector. Uh, so that's based on what direction we should be doing it, right? So we're going to work out our rotation of the camera. We're going to get the forward director from that. Is it? No, get world rotation. No, that's just the world rotation. Sorry, my, my mistake. Actually, no, is it? Yeah, we're getting the rotation of this camera in the world. My mistake, sorry. So if the camera's been rotated, we get that. Then we add forward to that. We'll get the forward vector of the rotation. So that is just a way for us to get a directional vector here, I think. Okay, and then we times that by an amount. We get the rotation and the forward vector extending outwards by 1500. This is the line of the trace. Okay, good. Uh, drag off get world location node and add a vector plus vector node connecting as seen below for the end. So this is for us to work out where is our end point. Okay. So that'll be a line between those two points then that we've calculated. Here we're taking the location of the first person camera and extending it out from it, 1500 units based on its rotation and forward vector. On the trace node, to uh, set the draw debug type to uh, for one frame. Okay, yeah, that doesn't keep it. It just, yeah, that means th that's ideal for this scenario where we're drawing it on every frame because it's in the tick function, right? Coffee just too hot to drink. Mah. Brainer, that sounds great. I love how politicians are using social media to communicate these days. Completely diluting the <laughs> professionalism that 
we would in, uh, expect, isn't it? Yeah, uh, so we had it earlier. Danny X was saying in chat that you got to do as a certain prefix, like ECC underscore collision channel, and then you put the number at the end. <gasps> Are you joined the oat milk gang, Mr. Barog? Spacey will be pleased. Lurking in the shadows, you'll get a little cheer emote if she's there. That's the one, sorry. Is that the sort of stuff you had to do as well, Brainoid? Yeah, uh, for me, I, I, I do my best to kind of avoid dairy anyway. So I've been on oat milk is my main milk choice. On their MySpace or their Bebo? No, no, I don't. It wasn't so mainstream then, though, I guess, right? So the enum I was expecting was wrong. It was plus one of it. Right. I'm not sure if the enumeration of it starts from the the named custom ones or if it starts from the existing ones that are in there as well as then the named ones. I'm not sure, but it could be something. Or it might just be plus one for fun. <laughs> Who knows? It's unreal sometimes. Okay. So drag off the execution pin. We'll do a print, no, a print string. Drag off the out pin, out hit pin, and search for break hit, and then break the hit result. That'll give us the struct, and then we can get the name of what we want to hit. Okay, so we have ejected from a first person camera perspective, so you can see the view of the angle of the trace. Okay. Oh, so it goes red and, and green is shown where it would have been going to, I guess, in this instance. You should see when the trace hits a cube, it prints cube to the screen. Yes. Okay, uh, should we do, should we get this going? What blueprint is this? The blueprint. Let's do it. Oh, very annoyed. The sadness. It'd be okay. Uh oh, is the camera in here? person camera component they have now is that different to the actual i don't know what the camera component is you assume it's got a camera it's this so let's just use that in our blueprint did they go to the first person character in this sorry i'm just feeling like i might be in the wrong place they go into the first person character yeah they do okay we're in the right thing so let's go into our tick function like they said right Right, we were zoomed out and then we want to do line trace by channel did that just delete it like so now we're going to do this on tick the start point is going to be from our camera actor Get world location like this. Let's whack that in there. And then we're also going to, from this, we're going to get the rotation to work out the end point. Get world rotation here. And then we want to get forward vector from it. And then we're going to times that by the distance. So times it by a float. And we'll promote this to a variable, which will allow it to be customized. So this will be our trace length for now. Uh, compile. Let's expose that out as well. And let's just set it to 1500 as they did for now. That will pass in as the end point. Um, No self is in there. Do you remember when I told you one pound is ten Turkish rupee? Uh, right. 
Yes, I do, actually, when we were looking at the font stuff, I remember. How's that changed recently? Yes! Oh, it's you. Thank you, Balrog, for sharing. Dan, you need to add the value of the forward vector to the current world position. To ah, thank you. Yes, I missed that bit. Good spot. Good spot. Uh... Hold on, yeah, because we just got the rotation. We want to get the end point, right? So we need to... Do we add... The, at this point, do we add? After time to get in the... How far we want to do it, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's get... This, and let's do an add vector to vector. You can now sneak up here. And you can sneak in there. Oh, some just sneak in. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Okay, thank you uh, for paying attention. Well, it's 11 now. Oh, that's not so good. Well, unless I want to come to Turkey. That's 10%, though. That's quite a big old change. It's a very short amount of time. Uh, I'd add some number to the forward vector. Uh, that's what this does here, right? The forward vector of whatever way you're facing, then we times it by the trace length down here, and then we add it. Yeah, no problems, no problems. It's good to have uh, people double checking. I'm all open to that. Then when we do hit, we want to break this. Oh, debug. Where's the debug? One uh, For one frame, yeah. That's fine. Also, what channel? Dan trace. Are we doing by channel in here? Yes, we are. Dan trace, we're going to detect then. Uh, and we are then going to... Yeah, we're, at this we have to one frame, but we're doing it on tick anyway. We're, we're doing a constant one on tick, so uh, we're not going to click to do it. So that should be fine for now. It's not efficient, but we don't care about that so much. Okay, so let's pull this out and break out the hit result into all of these wonderful things. And oh, what they did was they were just going to debug print log or print string. That's the boy. Uh, and we want to get the hit actor name in there. Can you do that? I think. I guess you can. Because it'll have a to string function in the actor, which will just get the name of it, I'd imagine. Okay, so we'll, we'll see whether this... At the moment, it shouldn't hit because nothing is... Well, I don't know how this set up to respond to my custom collision channel, actually. Oh, collision wall. Oh, no, that was up there. That was a different thing. Huh. Need some of the values we're getting out of this, shall we? Do visibility first, but I mean, it shouldn't really change whether or not we see the debug line, though, right? That implies to me that something's not right. Um, trace length there is set to 1500. Well, even if I've set nothing to the Dan Trace channel, uh, it, it should still be tracing, right? Oh, is, is that a trace? I think that might be the trace. 
Oh, it only shows if it hits. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, so in which case then, let's go ahead and set this block. Uh, let's just do this one over here. Bring it over. Uh, you, you are now going to have a custom. And you are going to block. Dan. Here we go. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is just make this go for a lot shorter time. Oh, there's a thing you can do to make it like only stay on the screen for the frame, but it's okay. Uh, and it's because it's coming from the camera, which doesn't line up with the cross here. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry for the noise. Okay, so if we set this to uh, trace uh, to overlap, it doesn't work. So, okay, we answered one of our questions we had earlier. That a single line by channel, let's get the document open. Uh, return the first actor with set to block. And then we can say overlap doesn't count. The channel type. Great. Happy with that one now. Uh, let's go to our back to our window where we were learning from then, which is this. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, how does the by object differ? It's going to basically just say use this instead. We can just make an array of the types of objects we want. And then we can do the same thing here. Only the added actor is now returning a hit. Consequently, the cubes. The physics actors do not return a hit. Okay, so we could do. We'll save this since we're doing the project. So this is a line trace by. Uh, oh, four objects. <laughs> okay, we're going to use very similar. Probably do it down here, closer to what we need from it. And we'll borrow this for now. We need that for there. That for there. And then we can make an array from this, can't we? I do you can right click and make array. You promote a variable, they do. I think I made one called Dan. <laughs> There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. Object types to it. Okay. And then just to ignore, does it say we should set that up for ourselves? No, it doesn't do anything. Oh, ignore self is already there. Okay. And then the rest of it is kind of the same. So we would just be, I guess we would be pulling that into there, right? But that is now going to pull the information from this one instead. Break that out. And let's drop that into there. Okay, great. That should hopefully be the setup of that one. So now we shouldn't, yeah, we don't get that anymore. But uh, we can go ahead and set up this object to have a twin brother. Congratulations. And this is going to be of uh, object type Dan. Great. Save. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, well, I guess we can do a wall of Dan's here. Might come handy a little later. I really should just be switching it to that. <laughs> It'd be easier to do, and then these would be a, light, a wall of uh, Dan traces. That's fine. Okay, so each one of these should be set to the Dan collision mode. And the Dan collision mode is set to block. So let's go and you can see 24, 23, 25, they all block it there. Whereas this stuff won't. Okay, now um, is there something we could do here with So if it can be object type Dan, it's not doing multiple. So we'll have to see how the multiple works, I guess, right? Like I'm wondering what if we had, I think, no, it's, it's only, it wouldn't work if we didn't do that. If we did that, pretty certain it wouldn't work. Oh, it does still. 23. Interesting. Hold on. No, it's because we're not doing it by the bloody channel now. Hold on. The object type is Dan. So it doesn't give a crap about these. It only cares about... Yeah, I think I, I summarized that actually before. By object. We're since first saying the object type is that, uh, regardless of um, collision settings of none overlap or oh, ignore it's not none overlap or um hit block okay so let's try the multi one so the multi one is going to be kind of similar i'd imagine do the channel one first by the looks of it. Oh, well, let's drink some coffee before it gets to that unsatisfying colder temperature. Oh, it's pretty much there. Oh, to include in the first blocking hit, returning only objects that respond to the tra specified trace channel. What this means is that there are a number of actors or components with collision that overlap the specified trace channel between the start and the end of the trace, you will receive them all. But if the first one blocks the specified trace channel, you'll only receive that one. If you want to receive all items regardless of overlap or blocking a trace channel, you should uh, use a multi-line trace by object. Okay, that, that gives more information, which is good. Uh, oh cool, so we do the same thing again, but we do a line trace by channel, we're going to re replace it with a multi-line trace by channel, and then the out hits. So then we want to do something in this example. We get the display name. Distractible mesh, and we have his trace uh, set to visibility uh, in its collision settings. Trace response to visibility, which is set to overlap. Well, the physics actor cube has its visibility set to block. You could use this information. Oh, are we, are we using the visibility channel? Visibility. Okay, that makes more sense now. Okay. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Let's try and do that then. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Stop. Go into uh, this. We'll have a look at doing them in C++ next week. Uh, so if we want to do a... This will be a multi-line. 
Post multi line by channel. Will be very similar again. But yuck. Yuck. Uh, we're going to do it by Dan Trace again. Uh, no, 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 no. Frame. And then we just need to iterate over these. And then we will do the same logic as before. So we have to break this out. And we will whack in that into the. Well, I know it's a bit of a mess, but don't worry about it. Oh, what does it not like? Array is invalid. Uh, wait, what have I done here? Uh, let's read the message. Let's stop being lazy. Oh, it's exec pin is not connected. Is that? Oh, that was it. Okay. It's weird. You don't often get that sort of stuff. But... Okay. So uh, we have done uh, our multi line trace by channel. So multi line check. This was the channel where these are all set to block. Dan's. So we should get all three of them when we play this. Yeah, you can see we got 22, 27, 26 continually. If we F8 out, you can probably see. Yeah, okay, so it's going through each one. So they're not set to block by the looks of it. Are they? No, they're uh, set to overlap. Okay, good. So if we set this one, can you change it at runtime? Oh, you can. That is good. Thank you, Block. Uh, yes, dude. Yes, dude. Uh, I've been working in a studio that uses Unreal for a year and a half now. So, yeah, pretty much since then, I said that I didn't want to mix between two engines. As much as Unity is very useful for the sort of side projects and that I do. And C Sharp is a lot nicer to work with, in my opinion. Uh, I'd rather keep trying to get better at what I do in work. It's easier for my brain. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not someone who loves learning loads of different languages or anything. I just like being able to get things done. Nope. Not mixing. Not for a while, at least. Okay, so that's quite cool. So we can It'll return all of them and it carries on. If we set this last one, it, it doesn't change the color of the trace. It just says it's going to block it at that point, right? That's all it will do. Actually, no, it does. It, it goes green afterwards, right? This is then blocked. There we go. Okay, that's cool. Uh, how have you been, Kiel? Still have vision. Kiel Block, you did that game with a bus, didn't you? Like a bus driver going around on a route. If I remember correctly. You will wait until that point where you are super used to effectors. And you type F vector instead of vector threes in Unity. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't want to do that. I still type vector three in Unreal. It hasn't happened for a while, actually, but yeah, definitely. It's something that happens. Yeah, F vector three. <laughs> yes. 
Oh dear, because there is actually an F vector two, which makes it even more confusing. Because you're like, oh, I should put the three then. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think we can guess how this one is going to go, right? It'd be the exact setup as before, but we're going to say what types of objects we want in. Uh, but this description might be good. Might, uh, we'll perform a collision trace along a given line and return all hits encountered, returning only objects that match one of the specified object types. Yeah, this is the one I think we wanted to find out how it worked. So does it return the overlaps? I think it will in this case. Whereas how, hang on, the single line, you did overlap, it didn't count, did it? I can't even, this is frustrating. Multi-trace by objects. So this will just be, yeah, this is, this is good. I don't know if we actually need to do this example because the one with the object is, is, is nothing to do with the collision profile. It's just, is it of that type? So I like, I'm quite, I think I'm okay with understanding that example there. No, no, that was not me. Doing lots, but nothing I would have shown around and nothing with a bus. Ah. We say you did a, a bus game ages ago for the first... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, Keelblock, you're from South Africa. If I, uh, if I, no, you're not. South Africa, right. I'm confusing your location with, oh, what was his name? Something, is it something like cool, cool dude or something like that? Oh, I forgot. And he did his first game jam and he did, um, uh, like he made this game about a bus. However, I, actually, no, I think you might be from South Africa and I might have confused myself now. But if you are, that's why I confused you because you're both from there. But I might have completely. Cool guy th with some number after it, it was, I remember. Anyway, sorry if I'm confusing you, dude. Ah! Happy anniversary. Thank you, Alicia Griffin. 31 months. Well, what do I... Do I have to give you something to say thanks? You can have a... a as you call him, a, you can have a... A Frank. There you go. There you go, kill block. Okay, so... I did remember that bit correctly. I just mistook you. For another South African individual. Oh, I didn't mistake you for them. I just might misremembered. A lizard ring. What, how, how does that work? Okay, bye Alicia. <laughs> she wants jewellery made out of lizards. I think she's losing the plot out, dear friend, Alicia. Um, so what was one of my outstanding questions with this? I think next week we'll, we can have a look at the, the, the shapes, uh, the different shape choices, and then start looking at it in C++ and think of some practical examples of using it. Welcome back. You want reptile jewelry, is it, Alicia? Um, oh, so we already checked this, right? Overlap didn't count when you do that. All actors it overlapped with up until, so the mul. Okay, there, that that is the difference then. This is just a hit. It always has to be a blocking hit, I guess. Whereas this one will actually show the overlaps as well. But if you don't care and you just want to know about everything, or if you don't want it to stop when it gets to the blocking one, you would use the objects. Okay, I think that makes sense. Now chilling on a plant. Does it enjoy living on a plant, Tini Shay?
Yeah, did they um did they they don't like build little homes, do they? They just kind of find a little place and sit there, right? Okay, so one of the other questions, uh, just to wrap up today's session then, that I was interested in looking at was, I'm guessing that these cubes, static mesh component, if we went to that mesh, it would have a collision in it. If we click on collision, show collision. No, hang on, it wasn't on though, right? No, but it must be because we walked into it. So it must be getting the collision from somewhere. That's something I don't quite get, actually. Okay, so say I brought in my own mesh that doesn't... I, I know I haven't like gone ahead and added collision to. Hello there, Saviour. Lizard homes, like a bird. No, a bird, a bird makes a nest. Right. Um, all right, what did we want to do? We wanted to try and add in a... Oh, I don't know if I actually brought the... I don't have the mesh. Unless it's a home. Yeah, home is, is not... I'm looking for specificity here. Oh, I don't have Blender on my computer either to do just a simple cube. Okay, so the, the question I'm unsure about, and maybe we'll have to research this, or just ask someone who knows, because I think it's a dumb question. But if someone knows in chat, feel free to answer. So, when I bring in a static mesh like these, uh, like this, sorry, this cube, does it, can you, hmm, you don't have to add a collision thing on it, right? Well, why is that? Is it, does every mesh come with a collision? Show collision. So I think this has a collision on it because we're just showing it. We're not like generating a, a collision there, right? So I'd imagine I'd be able to bring in meshes that don't have collisions as well. Not that you generally want to, but I just want to make sure I understand that is this collision is the thing that it's hitting with when we're doing our traces, not the actual vec um, planes. Uh, and Savior, I'm not making anything. So on, on Sundays, we do learning streams. So for the last hour and a half, I've been looking through learning about tracing in Unreal. So we've been going through and we've done a, a bunch of different examples of the four different types of trace that you have and looking with this beautiful paint picture at the different, um, what the kind of data you get out of a trace when it, it hits something. Um, Yeah, so I'm guessing I I just I what I'd like to do I'll have to I'll make a note to do it next week and I'll install Blender. Um, find out for next week. Yeah, the, those tiles, those tiles are constantly taken, but they're not being finished. Someone keeps extending it. They don't want it to finish. Uh, find out for next week. Um, the basic cube in level has a uh, mesh. Oh, a simple collision. On it. Okay, so next week, just to remind myself, we want to be looking at uh, uh, try out the other shapes other than line traces uh, and we'd like to also why did this one not do that word, word processing document word processors there's something about them there's loads of quirks and it's consistent between i don't know i think it's in word as well some of the no actually maybe it's not maybe it's just a google doc thing it, it drives me crazy though especially the thing where if you have like I wrote a heading here, like heading, and then I write and I change that, and then it'll change the following paragraph as well with it. And then you're like, oh no, don't do that. So then you do the set, you put them on different, you try, 
you do uh, you have like a gap between them and then when you press that it changes them both again oh it infuriates me I want to say you have to define a collision mesh on stuff that you import. Yeah, a savior. I think you're you're right with that. I remember when you uh, import it, you, there is options about whether it should generate a collision. But um, yeah, I, I'd like to just be be sure of that. But I think I think that's correct. But then, so we want to do that, and we want to then um, we want to do some coding with traces. So we will uh, CPP trace examples. Um, and we'll do maybe a, like a on click rather than tick. And so we can query something as we go along. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, that would be a good uh, start point for next week, at least the most fun. <laughs> oh dear. You're making me look forward to it already brain, but sweet. Okay. Uh, th that's cool for today then. So we've, we've done our general look. Uh, uh, ob what object types are and that we have these responses for collision and uh, overlaps and you can see these within uh, any object that has collision you can see this kind of table here and we added a dan trace and we added a dan collision of uh, like uh, an object well a dan object type it was so that's how what they show in this object responses here um so we we did that and then this time we've gone through and we've had a look more at traces and learned the, the specifics between a single and a multi because there was a little bit of ambiguity, ambiguity for me knowing exactly how it worked. But essentially, let's reiterate what it is. So the, the line trace by object. So if you think of these this object type here that we've got. Uh, oh, sorry, that was the wrong uh, drop down. This is what I meant. Uh, let, let me just go on one that I've already selected. There we go. Object type. These object types here are what you're kind of getting in this list here. So if we bring this back up. So when you do a single line trace by object, uh, it will return the first actor that has the specified object type that the trace encounters between its start and end point. Um, yeah, because we're doing by object, it doesn't matter whether it's overlap or yeah, it, it has nothing to do with this, basically. We are just essentially, it just checks, is this actor have this type? I wonder if you have ignore, would it do anything? Yeah, maybe that's one thing we could, single line trace by object. I don't think it impacts it. Oh my gosh, Dan, please. <laughs> right, you just run in this one, the rest of it should hook up fine. And we are just looking for Dan objects, okay. Oh, this is just because it's not hooked up. I don't I don't care that it's not connected. Can I just do that? No, just doesn't let me, it's so dumb. Should we just connect it up to end play instead just to shut it up because I don't particularly want to delete it at the moment. Not going to do anything anyway. Okay. Uh, let's press play. And our, these are object types of Dan here. I'm pretty sure it'll take the first one it hits. It doesn't really matter about this stuff. But we're saying if the object does not. This is how the object would respond to other Dan's though. And we're doing a trace. And so the trace isn't another Dan. So I'm pretty sure this has no impact at all about it. Yeah. So we are, oh, hang on, why is it not? Did I, did I not hook up the print? Dan, where are you going? Come on, Dan. Come on. We want to go here. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm printing the wrong one. Here we go. 
that was where the mistake was going. Yeah, so this is just hitting that front cube. That's fine. Uh, but we're going to make this front one uh, ignore it, but that shouldn't matter because we're doing it by object type. Yeah, it still says 23, 24, 25. Okay, good. So yeah, I was right in saying that. Regardless of the collision settings, um, it will just do the first object that is of that physics type or uh, object type. Um, then we have our single line trace by channel. This will return the first actor with collision that is set to block on that channel. So not overlaps don't count on this instance here. Um, interestingly, overlaps do count when you do the multi-line trace though. It'll return them, but it'll say it's not a blocking one. So I guess the reason for that is with a single, you don't really care if it, if it overlaps something. You don't care because you only want the first one it hits with a single one. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so uh, let's go then to our multi uh, trace by object. It'll return all objects. It'll go through all of them across the entire length of the trace and return them if they have that same object type, the same with the single, in the same style of the single, sorry. Um, and then we have our multi-line trace by channel, which will return all actors it overlapped with up until and including the first thing it blocks, or otherwise the end of the trace. Yes. Okay, good. So they were the different kind of uh, trace styles that we looked at today. Um, and we will have a look at these things next